Good afternoon, folks. This is Carl, your ticker guy, coming at you from sunny Niceville, Florida. Listen, I want to go with this non-borrowed reserve thing that keeps popping up, and there are a bunch of idiots running around on the net and elsewhere saying that this is no big deal. And the Fed has put this weird comment out on their webpage, which kind of tries to sort of say it, but they don't really say that, and you have to read very carefully. If you read the ticker today, you saw that I made a big deal out of this. There's a reason for that. I'm going to try to go through this in a quick video format and hopefully make it clear to everybody why we need to be on our, on our Congress people's butts right now about this. All right, It is important. Guys, this goes with what I've said about there being potential disruptions and dislocations coming in the bond market and maybe in the other financial markets. We need to be on top of this, and it is something that needs to be paid attention to immediately. All right, let's get right to the example. All right, I'm going to make this very simple. There's only two banks in the world, okay? Two banks. Hey, this makes it easy. And each of them went out and raised capital $20. All right, this is their reserves. These are, these are their reserves. And they have some deposits, they have some loans, but these are their reserves, this is what they've held back. All right. So now if we're in a fractional reserve world, there is $200, roughly, of loans flying around out there with this $20 reserve. All right. So Joe comes into the bank and he goes to the window, the teller window, and he takes out his 20 bucks. He goes and he says, give me my $20. All right. And the teller gives him his 20 bucks. Bang, it is gone. All right. Now. Bank over here now is short $20 on its reserves. And you say, well, that's a little bit of a problem. Except Joe goes to Walmart and he spends the $20 and Walmart does business with the other bank in town. So the $20 shows up over here because it gets deposited at the end of the day, okay? So now this bank doesn't have any reserves. He doesn't have what he's supposed to have. He's short 20 bucks. This guy is long $20, right? He has an extra $20. So this bank here goes to the Fed fund system and borrows the twenty dollars that he needs. All right, now he's going to pay a little interest to this guy for that because that's only fair, right? You got to pay somebody for the use of the money. All right, fine. So now this guy now has his twenty dollars in reserves. But now let's think here, guys. This is borrowed reserves, right? But this guy here had an extra twenty dollars worth of reserves. All right, so. On net, we balance everything out. Now there's no problem, right? Everything balances. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, plus 20, minus 20. When it's over here, okay, got the same situation. All right. Now, let's take the next example. This guy here, all right, comes in, takes his money, and it ends up over here again because he went to Walmart and spent it. All right, but now this bank goes to the TAF because. He tries to go into the Fed credit system and nobody will lend him the 20 bucks in the Fed fund system. So he goes to the tap and he takes Ben Bernanke this piece of collateral. All right? And he gives it to Bernanke. Now that's part of the bank's assets. Okay? And he gives it to the to Bernanke and Bernanke gives him 20 bucks. All right. Now, what's happened here in terms of reserves? This guy, if he didn't loan out this money, he has an extra $20 in his vault, right? So he has positive $20 in non-borrowed reserves. Here, however, we have negative $20 in non-borrowed reserves because this is borrowed, so this is negative. Well, minus 20 plus 20, zero, right? No change. All right, we're still good, right? We're still okay. All right, now, this, this guy over here, spends that 20 bucks and it gets deposited back in this bank. This guy now has $40. He doesn't need that. He takes it back to Bernanke. He now, we now are back where we started and he gets his collateral back. All right. And the system's back in balance. All right. But at no time, guys, in this situation has the non-borrowed reserves gone negative. All right. Because in total. All right. For this one bank over here, it did. Or for this bank over here, it did, but in aggregate, it hasn't happened. All right, now how does it happen? All right, this is where it gets tricky. Let's say that Joe comes in and he withdraws his twenty dollars, or maybe he doesn't. Maybe Joe doesn't withdraw his twenty dollars. Maybe this guy here in the bank, he wrote a credit default swap. 
And that credit default swap went underwater, and he was forced to either post the $20 as collateral or it blew up in his face, and this 20 bucks went... It's gone. All right, now he's over here, and he's short $20. So now he goes and he takes his collateral to the Fed window, the TAF, and he gets his 20 bucks. Aha! Now we got a little problem, because now when we look at the non-borrowed reserve number... What has happened here is it's gone up by $20. It's negative 20 bucks now, right? All right, because now there's 20 of this dollars that's in reserve has been borrowed and there is no offset. There's no excess reserves in our other bank in the system because that $20 was vaporized. It was lost and it's gone. Now, here is the problem. This isn't supposed to happen. When this bank finds himself with no reserve, without what he's supposed to have, what he's supposed to do is take his collateral and sell it for $20. Why? Because that deleverages his balance sheet. He shrinks the size of his balance sheet, he gets his reserves that he needs, but because his balance sheet has shrunk, his lending capacity is reduced. All right, so. We properly price risk by making the losers in these bets sell collateral in order to get their reserve ratios back. Why are reserve ratios important? Well, a lot of people say it has to do with inflation. That's not really, strictly speaking, true. Reserve ratios control how many times this money can circulate. I have $20 and I loan it out. If I have a 10% reserve ratio, I have to keep two bucks of it. So I can loan out 18 that $18 comes back to me, gets deposited, I can loan all but $1.80 of the 18 out. This velocity keeps going until I get to the point that essentially I'm loaning out pennies because all the rest is gone. If I raise reserve requirements, I decrease the number of turns that that money can go through. I decrease the velocity of lending. Okay, So that's, that's one of the primary reasons for reserve ratios. But here's the problem. If we allow non-borrowed reserves to take place, we not only temporarily increase lending capacity beyond what the system intends, but we don't punish people for their bad decisions. Now, here's the other problem that comes with this. I've got this 20 in borrowed reserves, right? Because I've got my collateral posted at the TAF. Joe comes in and says, give me my 20 bucks. Joe takes it. He spends it at Walmart and ends up over here. And this is Sound Bank. This is the guy that has a brain in his head. He now has an excess $20, right? But I got nothing. Now, my loan at the TAF window matures and I got to pay it back. But I don't have $20. <laughs> I got a little problem. So what do I do now? Do I let Bernanke seize my collateral? Do I... Maybe I go to Ben and I say, Ben, 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 $50 billion ain't enough. You need to loan out another $20 billion. Oh, Ben says, yeah, sure, okay. So now I take my coffee mug over here. Oh, I got my reserves back. I got my reserves back. Guys, do you realize what's going on here? This whole thing's a shell game. All right? First off, if this was really worth $20... Well, this was worth twenty dollars. Why didn't I just sell one of them? That's the first problem. The second problem is, how many times can I keep jerking people off like this when they come back in and ask for their money? Good question. I don't have answers to that. But here's the bottom line, guys. According to the way fractional reserve banking is supposed to work, when you lose your money, your reserve money, you're supposed to go out there and sell collateral in order to make yourself whole again. And if you can't, you get seized. Ben's playing fast and loose with the rules, and we're letting him. If all that collateral goes bad, $100 billion worth of it, where do you think it's going to end up? Where do you think it's going to be made up from? I'll tell you where. Your wallet. Call Congress.